Okay, this is the second of our tire videos, and it's the one that's a little bit more advanced. So we started by taking the markings on tires and finding the dimensions from that. Uh, and now we're moving on. So this one's called No Officer. I promise I was going to the speed limit. That's my niece long time ago. Thank goodness for Snapchat. Okay, so let's say you have a car and you have a flat tire and you need a new tire and you're looking at tires and you're going, okay, well, will this size fit? So I have these two tires that I'm looking at and um, they're not in, they don't have the size that, that was already on my car. So I wanna know, you know, if this other one will fit because really, I mean, what I totally kind of care about is whether or not it'll fit on the rim and that's this part, right? So they're both 18 inches in diameter. So the diameter of my rim is 18 inches. So they'll both fit. So surely that's okay, right? Like that's not gonna cause any problems, huh? Okay, well, let's look. Okay, so over the last two videos, we've been filling out these tables. So we're gonna do that again. So for this first one, so my aspect ratio is a 50. So I'm gonna put that here, it's 50%. For the second one, the aspect ratio is 60. And if you'll remember, the aspect ratio was the, it was the ratio of the height to the width. So it's H over W in percent form. The width, so our width in the first one, well actually in both of them is 245, but that's in millimeters, right? So 245 millimeters, but I need it in inches, so I'm gonna convert. So the, the width in inches then is 9.65. And the conversion was that um, for every one inch, there's 25.4 millimeters. So I just use that. So that's 9.65 inches. Okay, so here's where we come to the difference. Our height. So we decided before that our height was the aspect ratio over 100, to get it back into a decimal, times our width. Okay, well, so the aspect ratios are different. So for the first one, this is like 0.5, because it's 50 over 100, so 50 over 100 times 9.65. This one gives me 4.83 inches. Really, I don't need to write the inches because that was already over, I guess I could take these off. That's listed over in the, um, on the left column. Okay, so that's fine for that one. This one, our aspect ratio is different though. It's a 60, so it's 60 divided by 100 times 9.65. This is gonna give me 5.79. And if you recall, that height is the height of the, the rubber between the top of your tire and your rim. So you're like, okay, well, that's not a big deal. That's not even quite an inch off, but okay. So the rim diameter is the same on both, that's 18. So 18 here, 18 here. The diameter of the tire. So this is the diameter of the rim plus two times the height, right? In this case, it gives me 27.66 inches. Okay. On the other one, the diameter plus two times the height, this gives me 29.58 inches. And you're still like, so? It's 18 inches, it fits on my rim, I could drive it. Okay, that's true, you can drive it. But here's where it comes in. The circumference is what we're interested in. So our circumference is pi times the diameter, or two pi r. So pi times diameter for this first one, we're gonna do 27.66 times pi. That gives us 86.896, so I'm gonna say 86.9 inches. So every time your tire turns once, it, you travel 86.9 inches. For the next one, so that's 29.58 times pi, every time it turns around once, you're traveling 92.9 inches. Okay, doesn't seem like a whole lot. So you're going a full six, inch, six inches farther every single time your car turns or your tire turns around. Well, so your speed and your distance, like all this stuff that's measured in your car, like it tells you you're going 65 miles an hour, that's not based on, like your car is not measuring the land. What your car is measuring is your car is measuring the number of times your tire is turning because it takes the number of times your car is turning and it multiplies it by the circumference that gives you your di distance. So this starts turning into a big deal. 
So if we look at it like this, this like is literally a big deal because this is going to affect how fast you're actually going. So I can I can I can figure out a scale factor, right? So if I take my new one, which is this 92.9, so I'm going to call this my scale factor. I'm going to divide it by my original one or the factory one because the factory one's what your car is set to. So 92.9 divided by 86.9. This gives me a 1.069 scale factor. So then that means that if my car tells me I'm going, like I'm, I'm driving down the road, I think I'm going 70. So this is what the car says. So car says 70 miles an hour. What the police officer is going to tell me when he pulls me over is the scale factor times that. So actual equals your scale factor times your original. or times what you're seeing. So this is 1.069 times 70. So really I'm going 75 miles an hour, 74.8. So especially at high speeds, this kind of becomes an issue. And it becomes an even bigger issue if your aspect range, you know, if you, if you really choose a, a wonky um, tire. So you can't just go by the, the diameter of your rim. you got to go by everything. So a friend of mine actually had this happen. So he, his wife's car needed new tires, so he got new tires, and he didn't know anything about this. He saw the diameter was the same, so he put them on. And so she kept driving going, wow, I'm going the speed limit, but I'm just going so much faster than everybody else. They're driving so slow. And then, of course, when she got pulled over, it turned out that, uh, yeah, not so much. So this is this is an important thing to remember if you um, if you make any modifications to your car, like if you want to like jack it up a little higher and put big giant tires on it. Usually they can they can calibrate it so that it'll show you the right speed, because otherwise you're literally not going how fast you think you're going. Also, you're not you're uh, like your car will register how many miles you're going. The little um, let's see odometer is it? So like. I always set mine to zero when I put gas in my car because for a long time I drove old cars and sometimes their gas gauges would go out. Yeah, because I'm cool like that. But so, <laughs> I always reset mine to zero even though my car is not crappy anymore. But I always reset it to zero anyway because I know how far I can go on a tank of gas. So if, if my gas gauge is still telling me that I have half a tank but I've driven 300 miles, I know that that's not true. So, But if you change your tires like this, that also affects the the little odometer so when it tells you you've gone 100 miles you really haven't you've gone more or less depending on what kind of tire you put in.